Thank you. Thanks very much and uh, good afternoon um, to all of you. I'm just um, going to attempt to share my presentation and hope that I don't um, share uh, something like my laundry list or anything like that, which would be slightly unfortunate, but um, hopefully that you can now see the slides. Um, thanks, Laura. That's that's great. Um, so thanks very much for the invite um, to be here today. I'm really delighted to be talking to you. Please don't be beguiled by the look of um, the sunshine that appears to be pouring in my window. I, I have to tell you, it is bucketing here today, so that somehow it's uh, managed to stay light. Um, but uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm conscious of um, how busy everyone is, so I'm going to crack on with my presentation. I'm going to share with you, um, as uh, Joanne kindly said in her introduction, um, a little bit about some of the practices that we developed in um, QA Scotland when um, I had my role there as Head of Quality um, and Enhancement in QA Scotland. And um, and some also will, will be sharing some of the more recent work I've been involved in since I've moved to take up this um, UK-wide role. Um, so looking at some of the, the work we've engaged with with our members to um, share good practice and student engagement during the pandemic. But to kick things off, um, I think we've all um, enjoyed um, sight, a much greater sight of each other's um, pets and those uh, students that we share our homes with. Um, and one of the things that uh, it would have been nice to do had I been able to join you in person for this event is to sometimes do a bit of a show of hands and see how do we think of students fundamentally? Do we think of them as consumers or partners? And one of the things that's really interested me is that if I were to ask that of a Scottish audience without any shadow of a doubt, almost everybody would put their hands up for the partners element and very few um, would at least in public put their hands up for consumers but um, across the UK it's much more likely there's a little bit of of division there and that and, and actually fun ultimately most likely that um, delegates in an audience would identify um, students as being a little bit of both and they would say well it kind of depends um, and for sure there are elements in which um, students are um, consuming services from us whether um, in non-pandemic times that might be accommodation or some other more commercial activities but I would um, strongly emphasise and I suspect given the, the nature of the topic here today um, and many of you would as well really regard students much more um, when we think of them in a learning and teaching environment we regard them much more as partners and, and why I'm emphasising that is I think it, that the way in which we engage with students depends and is fundamentally affected by how we think about them um, and I, I certainly would say that um, it, you know, students don't come to any provider to have learning done to them. Um, they really, they really do. Um, as my mum would say, get get what get get as much out of the experience as they put into it. They fundamentally are co-creating that learning experience with us when they come to our institutions, and that of course affects um, how we're engaging with them. But nonetheless, we have been through this massive disruption um, of the pandemic, and um, one of our international speakers who joined us for our conference just at the end of last calendar year, characterised the experience in this way that we had you know, started off with, with pedagogy. We moved through a phase of panic gogy when we're saying, oh my goodness, we can't deliver um, in person in the way that we would have before. What on earth can we do? And what we now want to do is um, move back out into something that's more like a planned and designed for um, student experience. So um, as we, fingers crossed, are at the, at the, you know, beginning to come out of um, this terrible pandemic set of circumstances, um, QAE, um, much like, um, like QQI, um, have been preparing a range of guidance and supporting resources to help um, our members and help our providers to um, cope with this with the with the pandemic situation and much of that was focused on securing academic standards but elements of it too were focused on this nature of the student learning experience and at the heart of all of our supporting information um, what came through really strongly was this emphasis on the importance of um, student communication and engagement and um, how we could support students to engage in their learning and um, but also to think about how we could encourage and support students to engage in discussions about the quality of their experience so both of those um, uh, both of those uh, aspects and it's very clear to us that those institutions who maintained positive student communication um, also um, fared particularly well when it came to um, you know how students felt that they had they had progressed and then what their experience had felt like 
Um, so within QA Scotland, we were actually very fortunate. We had our crystal ball had been working extremely well. Um, and we had already um, within the academic year 2019-20 had um, embarked on this uh, focus on project. It was a focus on technology enhanced learning. I think we all felt that we should have gone out and predicted the lottery numbers as well. And um, that really was a piece of, of extremely good fortune. So we had embarked on this project and what we were able to do once we realised the pandemic struck was place um, particular emphasis on a pivot um, to uh, online and digital um, um, delivery. And a key element of that project was looking at how we could support our providers to um, promote engagement with, um, with students. And that covered a broad range of activity, not only engaging in um, online or di the digital environments, so engaging in their learning, but also slightly wider things like creating a sense of belonging um, amongst our student communities, which is particularly challenging um, given the modes of enforced modes of delivery um, and thinking about um, things Things like mental health and well-being. Um, we were also able to really capitalise on the fact that we had run a previous national enhancement theme looking at student transitions and part of that work was looking at the kinds of skills and strategies that students need in order to help them make successful transitions. And those are transitions of different types and during that particular theme we were predominantly thinking of transitions into, through and back out of higher education but actually some of the skills and strategies had great relevance as students urgently and rapidly had to transition from a largely in-person experience to a mostly um, digital or online um, experience in terms of assessment and their delivery. Um, so we were we were lucky with that and we were able to create this uh, resource hub so that we could share a range of our materials with with our with our providers not only in Scotland but right across the UK. Um, another piece of work which came out of our enhancement theme activity and I just want to spend a little bit of time talking to you about was creating um, a set of principles around res responding to the student voice. What we found is because they, they, in the Scottish sector we had quite a strong history of um, student engagement work and as I'd said at the start, treating our students as partners and recognising them as partners in their, in their learning. So the Scottish institutions, by and large, were pretty good at, um, at requesting feedback from student and, students and not too bad at listening to the student voice either, but um, for, for most of our um, evidence. But what we were less good at doing was letting, making sure that they were letting students know what they'd actually done with that feedback and what the outcome of that was. Now, that's not the same is agreeing to everything, but making sure that you're giving um, students feedback on their feedback, if you like. So we created this um, piece of work, which is looking at um, how we could uh, go about responding to the student voice. And in order to identify a set of principles for doing that, um, we engaged in a variety of work. We created a student-led steering group um, to deliver the project. Uh, we conducted a scan of international practice, so what was happening in other places. Um, we worked with our partnership organisation student Students Partnerships and Quality Scotland Sparks. One of the, um, it's a great organisation, but it is quite a dodgy acronym. We we all recognise, and um, our colleagues Sparks were engaged in a number of um, European Student Union activities, and they were able to um, press on that uh, on that relationship they had there in order to deliver a, a focus group. In fact, they delivered two focus groups with student union members in Europe to get a sense of what was happening elsewhere. We conducted a survey of our own institutions, of course. Um, and we were able to engage the sector um, in, a, in a think tank event with staff and students. And out of all that range of activity, we identified a set of, of principles um, for responding. And um, you can see these here. So um, some of them you might clearly expect um, things like working in partnership, making sure that you're using the existing representative systems to best effect, in some cases reviewing those and making sure that they are as effective as you hope. Certainly encouraging a sense of dialogue, not only um, you know, letting students know what you want or, or speaking, but actually um, you know, having that two way um, flow of information, being timely with your with your with um, your feedback to students. So making sure that those students who'd actually provided the feedback also then heard what you intended to do with it and ideally to let them know what you actually had done as well, rather than students feeling that they were delivering their feedback into a bit of a black box and some other group of students at some point in time might hopefully benefit from it. 
Um, so uh, that, that sense of, of timeliness is important. And making sure that you be transparent with the information as well, so that you could let students know what you can and you can't do. Um, and this is closely linked as well to the notion of embedding ethics, which is really about making clear to students how you're going to make use of their data, what you're going to, going to do with it, and that you're adopting an ethical approach to that. And very important, the last two principles is about um, making sure that you're um, supporting enhancement led approaches. So it's about improving your, your, your circumstance, thinking about the ways in which you can be delivering better and you can really be using feedback from students to make sure that you're offering um, a, a, a student experience that is as good as it can be. And also making sure that you are celebrating the achievements you have, um, you have made. And so, you know, perhaps making use of um, the student led teaching awards that you run for example, looking at you know what is that students have liked so much about their experience that they've actually nominated someone for an, an award in it. So we created a set of cards which um, identified these principles and also had a set of um, activities and ways in which you could make use of these, these cards. Um, so some of the examples of the occasions in which um, colleagues could use them are set out here. So it might be to audit or review um, your existing practice. It might be to benchmark it across institutions or, uh, or between departments within institutions. Um, essentially, you can use these um, cards or use the discussion activities in them in a range of day-to-day -day settings. What we didn't want was to create additionality. So we didn't want to say right now we've got these principles, we want to add an additional process in, um, for all providers and wh which they would go through and uh, to make use of them. We wanted to say um, look, this is um, uh, you know that this is uh, as something that you can build into your to your everyday experience. Um, and we also created them in editable format so that both providers and um, student associations could make use of the questions and the activities um, in, and adapt them to their own circumstances. And we heard from a number of providers who did that really successfully. Um, a case in point would be the Dundee University Student Association who, who made um, extensive use of them in that format. Now, they actually, we actually created them, as you probably saw in my earlier slide, as a nice little, um, little pack of physical cards that we were able to give out and people could could use and write on and so on and those weren't really the most useful during a pandemic and um, so we uh, re redesigned them and created them for use in a <clears throat> excuse me in a digital space so that they could actually be used in an online environment successfully as well um, moving on to another piece of our work, uh, another part of the jigsaw. So we had these principles in practice. Now, although they were created to respond to the student voice, they're actually really helpful as ways of engaging students as well. Um, so you can use those principles in, in a number of settings. Um, and one of the factors that can sometimes inhibit um, student engagement and indeed staff engagement is not necessarily understanding the evidence that um, is being discussed, is being put in front of them as perhaps as part of um, review work um, or as part of um, yeah, some of the student representative activity they might be engaged in. So we um, worked with some colleagues in the sector, we commissioned um, this guide to using evidence and initially it was, it was focused primarily on a student audience and the guide was picked up um, far and wide, including by the Office for Students, I have to say, um, interestingly, they identified it as a key um, reference. Um, and many staff found it so useful that actually the following year we, we created a companion um, uh, guide, which was predominantly then addressed to, to staff to help staff in using that evidence. Um, and you can see a couple of bits of feedback for, um, for our guide to using evidence there. So it does things like uh, identify what's the distinction between qualitative and quantitative information and what's legitimate evidence, what are legitimate ways of gathering evidence to help support with um, student engagement for students to use in their own campaigns, as well as saying, well, what are some commonly used um, pieces of data or data sets within the sector um, that I might hear about when I'm going about my, my business as a student rep? So that, that was another helpful piece. And we're continuing across the UK to draw on the fundamentals that are within that um, data guide when we are delivering our work. Um, across the UK. 
But um, looking at cross UK work, um, I mentioned earlier that um, we had carried out, as, as you did too, um, a lot of support work to help our providers um, in peak pandemic. Um, but two of the pieces I just want to flag with you now is one was looking at links between good practice and digital learning, teaching and assessment. And in particular, we, we wanted to identify those what were the characteristics of good practice in digital delivery or assessment that were also associated with improved student engagement, progression and achievement? Um, and we published um, a couple of resources on that, and I'll, I'll come on to talk about some of the common features in a moment. A second piece, um, a very short um, supporting resource we, resource we produced, was to design to help students understand some of the language around um, quality and academic standards. There was a lot in the press about the value and were these students getting the same value during the pandemic if they weren't getting in-person delivery, all of these things. So what we wanted to do was help students understand what we think of when we talk about academic quality, academic standards, and what are the other elements that might be bound up in thinking about the value of your award or the value of your experience. And one of the key things we were asking was, well, who's responsible for each of those different dimensions? Um, moving on then to think about um, some of those characteristics that were associated with um, positive um, student engagement or improved student engagement. Um, so things like having a provi having provider wide guidance on course design as opposed to an element of allowing all course leaders or program leaders to um, engage in good practice themselves, having that provider wide discussion about what um, was important. Um, also having um, having given, albeit very rapid thought, but a pedagogically um, designed or orientated thought to the balance between instructional, instructional and interactive content. And overall, I'm conscious of, of the time, so I'm going to um, go very rapidly through this, forgive me. Um, but a, a key element that came through all of that was um, the were opportunities for students to actually engage in live interaction, not only with tutors, but actually also with other students because something that we um, were very conscious of was the extent to which students could very rapidly feel a sense of loneliness and isolation, especially if the um, contact they were getting was um, largely looking at a little set of blank screens because either people were too shy or their interconnection, what, internet connection wasn't strong enough to allow them to keep their cameras on. So very conscious about those opportunities for that, uh, that live engagement. And something we're now turning to uh, now is thinking, well, beyond the pandemic, how will students study? What have we learned from that experience? And we've learned a huge amount as a sector. Um, and uh, what are the opportunities that we can take to really engage our students in discussing what the nature of the student experience will look like? What will a campus feel like if we're going to be have a more of a sustained, um, extent, more of a sustained element of blended delivery? That can be great. There's lots of advantages to technology but what does it feel like if you're on campus um, while that's uh, while that's going on so lots of really key questions and I'm very much looking forward to hearing the other presentations here today I really do thank you for your attention thanks for listening I'm happy to take questions I think given the timing not now but perhaps at the end um, or uh, you can see my email address there if you'd like to get in touch with me I'm always delighted to to hear from colleagues but thanks very much for now thank you